Current time is now 7:25 p.m. here in Seoul, South Korea. It's time for Kim Young Des back to the culture, and because all of our listeners absolutely love him on Zoom, so they could see his face. Uh, Young Des joins us live on Zoom. Uh, Young Des, hello to you. Hi. Oh no! Speaking of, okay, that's just, that's... speaking of national flag, <laughs> national flag. Um, can you can you draw it right? Oh, uh, you know what? I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh, <laughs> it took no. I made sure that I can because uh, <laughs> someone caught me off guard and said whether or not uh, you can do it. Uh, now I can uh, for sure, but uh, it's pretty. Do tough. you do you have your own kind of rule to remember? Uh, th- there was a number rule that mm-hmm. uh, my parents taught me when I was a, a kid, uh, but I forgot what the, the actual rule is. Is there a way that you remember it? Like, you know, four, one, two, three, something like that. Okay. So you used the you know number I mean? rule too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I guess that's how like every one of us were <laughs> uh, raised into this. Oh, by the way, uh, Young Day, I have to tell you this. Uh, I think you would be very proud of me. Uh, today, earlier today, Arirang Radio, because we're celebrating 19th anniversary of our launch. Oh, uh, congratulations. Yeah, so we, we had a special show uh, at 12 noon where all the radio DJs, uh, we came together and we did a show. And we were told to dress like idol, okay? Like <laughs> idol members. Guess who I dressed yeah. up like? If BTS? I, no, no way, because I didn't want any hate from ARMY. I dressed up like H.O.T., <laughs> but you know what people said? They said you look like Super Mario, and I got very upset. I, I mean, what era? Well, I mean, they said idol. They said dress up like an idol, and so you know. From, yeah, I mean, the you mean H O T, right? You, you're you're doing H O T. Yeah, I dressed up but like what? candy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I did. I wore. I yeah, did that the the, the, the big globes and things like I, that. I had everything. I had the I had the pants. Oh. I had the shirt. I had the hat. I had the gloves. Must have been cute. Send me some photos. Uh, yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, I have. It, it looks pretty nice. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought about you. Yeah, I said, man, you would be proud of this, because today we're celebrating the 19th anniversary of radio. Wow. Uh, we are going to be talking about radio related stuff. Um, as, I mean, we grew up. I mean, you grew up in the 80s too. I grew up in the 80s, but I was a little bit too young in the 80s. Uh, being like. You know, growing up in the '90s, we all grew up with radio, right? I mean, well, were you, were you a radio person too? I was definitely a radio person. Oh mm. my goodness! When I was mm. in elementary school, middle school, uh, not so much in high school, I listened to radio every single time. Um, so, what were what were some of your favorite shows? I only listened to uh, one station uh, back then. I remember, I grew up in New York, and so there was a station uh, called Z100. Z100. Yeah. Okay. And so it was like, you know, all the you know latest songs and things like But they had like talk shows. And, oh, you know, okay, it, okay. Yeah. Uh, it was different. It was good. I listened to it for like music and also the... I was supposed to be sleeping, and then, you know, I had the Walkman, and then, you know, it has the... The preset, and I would always listen to radio before I go to sleep. And at nights, they mm-hmm. used to have like these mm-hmm. late night talk shows. So, yeah, uh, I really enjoyed it. What about yourself? I mean, I was definitely, I was still, I am a radio person. And the radio, I mean, th- there used to be a, the era of AM radio, right? Yeah. Then uh, there, um, there was FM. It was a game changer. I mean, the the sound is like a uh, super crisp and uh, the quality was actually amazing because I mean, you don't have, the, the, well, there's still uh, some people who have like a great quality of stereo system at home. Uh, but uh, sometimes you, you, you know, only thing you have is uh, just a simple, the, the radio, mm-hmm. right? The portable radio. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the Afghan radio was the, uh, it was everything. It was kind of your music teacher mm-hmm. and a personal, like a playlist uh, type of device. Right. Uh, it was always amazing because, I mean, when you, well, recently people listen to the music using like the Spotify, Apple Music and uh, all the, those kind of systems. But And they would pick you some songs, choose you uh, some songs based on your your selection. Right, right. But sometimes it was not exactly, you know, I, I always feel that the, that kind of playlisting and uh, algorithm is not really an accurate, or sometimes is is quite always kind of below your expectation. But the radio, you can actually learn some music. Mm-hmm. You know, whether if you really 
love or or not yeah you just trust your favorite dj right trust your favorite radio host and almost like learn new music through yeah. them so i mean that was the greatest charm charm for me um uh, you know for radio so when i was a kid my, my two uh, different dream jobs uh were a radio host and a record store owner <laughs> Like everyone else. <laughs> I said true music lover. I, you know what's funny is when I was young, I, I always said to myself, my goodness, I think it would be really fun to host my own radio show. I mean, and luckily, I'm, I'm blessed, very blessed to uh, do what I do right now. Um, Lucky you. Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't think I was going to be hosting a news radio show. I thought it was going to mm. be a different kind of radio show. And, I, and I, I've been able to do that in the past uh, in my you know other shows that I've mm -hmm. uh, hosted in the past. But... Yeah, I just it's so interesting. The thing about, I mean, there's people that love TV, obviously, uh, and there's people that love radio. The best thing for me, the reason why I apps, and I still say this, I I've told many people because I've done television too, um, but I say there's something special about radio, and the reason for yeah. that is because I can. Uh, talk to our listeners. You can't do that on television. Right. Right. So yeah, I mean that that intimacy, right? Yeah. And a radio usually, uh, not now you're using it too, but the radio usually use that really high quality condenser microphone, mm -hmm. right? Or in the U.S., they they would prefer the dynamic microphone, but whatever. They would use this high quality microphone, and uh, they use it really cl close to your mouth, mm -hmm. and you're almost whispering it, right? Especially, f you know, for the late uh, late night radio show, yeah, yeah, music show. They they would just read your letter, um, you know, postcard, and uh, tell tell their story, tell your stories. Uh, then uh, they it feels like they almost you know talk right to your ear. I mean yeah. that's the great fantasy. I mean that's a uh, that's that's why people would feel that radio host is their friend. No, and you know what? I, I, it's, I know my show is very different from some of the other radio shows here on Arirang Radio where uh, we talk about news and there's a lot of serious stuff going on and there's limited time for me to kind of converse with my listeners. Mm. And I, I do tr try my best to talk to all of our listeners. And that's one of the best parts about doing radio is uh, they're part of the show. I, you know, we have yeah. so many guests on the show, I have myself, I have you, you have all these people, but it's really the listeners who also make it fun as when well. I love reading these messages. And Youngda, you said something very interesting. Um, you said when we're talking about messages, you said postcard. Because, <laughs> because, yeah, because, I'm from the generation, postcard generation. Because nowadays yeah. we just get messages, we get text messages, or we get like these uh, live YouTube messages. Uh, I used to just call in and then uh, say whatever my message is. But tell us about the postcard era because this is cool stuff. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that was the only way to communicate with uh, your favorite host or a radio station i mean you just write your you know there there are official you know post office postcards right it's not customized postcard it's an official postcard and you you're going to write your your message really tight i mean yeah. in the uh, on the back side of the postcards then send them uh to the address but it's it's uh kind of um i, I don't know how you how you say it in english sasoham it's a personal P.O. box, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. You always write uh, the letters uh, or uh, postcard to the to the P.O. box, and uh, the writers, you know, they would pick the the kind of you know you know interesting uh, messages and uh, or sometimes it's beautifully decorated you know postcards, and uh, they they brought them to the to the DJ. So, yeah, it was it was really kind of sacred ritual. <laughs> <laughs> Almost like a kind of sacred ritual. Because you have been listening to radio for a really long time. And again, you're going back to the postcard era. Uh, 80, 86, 87? Yeah. I think. Uh, our, list, our, our producer says back before, they used to have like each radio program, they used to have like an exhibition on like really nice uh, letter, yeah. letters, right? Like the yeah. paper letters that you would get. And there you go. That's exactly what our producer said. You guys are in the <laughs> same era here. Uh, my question to you is: Has have you ever sent postcards and your story was uh, aired on the show? Have you ever had that oh, happen? Not to you? really, but um, they once, I think twice, once, 
they played my request. Okay. That was the only thing. I, I haven't really write a long or you know serious uh, stories to any 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 uh, any show. Mm -hmm. But I sometimes requested the song that I couldn't find at all. Oh, really? Anywhere. Yeah. Sometimes the uh, radio station, you know, or TV station, radio station, they're the only one uh, that own that record. It, it's you know rare items or a collector's item. Mm -hmm. So. I mean, th that's the only way. I mean, you, nowadays you can Google it, you can you can uh, find it on YouTube, and uh, you know most of uh, the streaming services uh, have have those songs. But uh, at the time, radio station they're the only one who have all these recent songs and uh, rare songs and everything. So only way that you can listen to those songs are by, you know by requesting the song. Uh, Polito Maldonado says, SJ, I did send postcards to DJs sometimes. Yeah, sometimes, like, uh, <laughs> some of our radio DJs. Yeah. Like, everyone except for me, I never get anything in the mail. No, no, some of our, like, idol DJs, they get, like, gifts and stuff, or, like, yeah. at least they get, uh, post. I get nothing. I get not. I get zero. <laughs> I get zero. And, uh... Uh, but I'm mean, not saying, you know, you, you should send it. Uh, our producer is uh, really reminiscing the past. He's loving this. Uh, he also said it used to be very popular uh, to, you know, the paper crane? Paper crane? Yeah, paper chungi uh, hak. They used oh. to, like, they used to uh, fold it and used to send, like, a thousand, ten thousand uh, at a time. And so. And the, and the axe, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, I, I didn't live... I mean, we didn't have this, like, in the United States, but, like, my special memory of just, like, being part of radio is I also listened to... Because I didn't have cable TV, I used to watch... I used to listen to baseball. Mm. And so, you know, I, I grew up a yeah, Yankees fan, yeah. New York Yankees fan, and I used to listen to Yankees baseball on radio. And sometimes when they had rain delays, they used to have fall uh, call-ins. Mm. And so you could talk to the the play by play guys, and I used to call as soon as they say it's raining. I I had it on speed dial. I call them right away, uh, or else you can't get through them. And so I remember going through, and I would have uh, uh, discussions on the phone. And it was a very special moment. But I would have the radio on, right? So what happens when you have the radio on and you're talking to the the, the people on radio? It echoes. Yeah. Yeah, and so I remember them telling me to turn off the radio and things like right, that. Right, turn turn off the radio, and uh, you put the your receiver, you know, the other side of the 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 radio. Right, right. Yeah, that was usually the com common request from uh, from the station. And uh, you know, speaking of the uh, the sports van, um, how exciting it was! You know, without watching it, you just have to listen to the, the the broadcast. Yeah, yeah. By radio, you know, they they just describe it like a so real right <laughs> uh i mean you have to be so good to you know do radio because you're right you have to describe the play uh every single time and so me listening to uh baseball radio when i was a kid that helped me because i used to be a play-by-play -play, uh baseball commentator mm. before a, a few years back oh and so that really helped me out uh with this but let's talk about uh some of the more legendary korean dj uh, djs here in korea um, I, I feel like there's always one radio show that everyone will talk about when it comes to the most iconic radio show. It's Starry per Night. Yeah, exactly. Pure Bomb, right? Um, and Pure there Bomb, were yeah, and there were so many DJs that were able to uh, grace the microphones for Pure Bomb. One name comes out often as probably the most legendary, the most popular Pure Bomb host. Uh, who would it be? Lee Moon Se. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. No doubt. yeah, yeah. He um, his reign um, I don't know, his reign was less than ten years actually, so it's less than you you, you imagine, way less than you imagine. But it, it but it felt like he he was forever um st Starry Night host, you know. Uh, it it would tell us that how impactful he was as radio DJ. He was not just radio DJ. He was a teacher. He was your friend. Uh, he was a, a con consultant, and uh, he was a kind of mentor mm -hmm. you know, for the younger generation. He he would always listen to you. He would always, you know, introduce a new, new fantastic song. I mean, uh, through 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 Starry Night, I I was able to learn a lot of like underground music, like 
you know, 봄, 여름, 가을, 겨울, and uh, 빛과 소금, and, and a lot of, uh, especially 유재하 and 김현식. Yeah. And uh, the song that I first lis- listened to through, through uh, 별밤, Starry Night, and, and the song that I requested so many times, uh, so many times was um, 최성원's 제주도의 푸른밤. Mm. Yeah, the song was, song was amazing, but uh, I didn't have any uh, enough pocket money at the time yeah so uh either you should borrow it some borrow the the, the tape or cassette tape or lp from your friend but if you don't have anyone to have uh, to the, the uh, you know who own that record you you just have to wait so i i i really waited <laughs> i waited for um as far as i remember two weeks two weeks but i i believe that he would play the song right. sometime again so i waited two years and the, on the thursday night he would the the I think the last song of the the second part of the show and uh, he just he just he just started to to the mention this song, you know, Chejudo e Purumbam, I was, I got you know goosebumps oh, all wow. of my body. Um it was it was just a moving experience. But yeah. um nowadays as I as I uh tell this story, you know, you know, I don't know how many people would uh kind of uh agreed uh the, the, what i'm saying right now but um it was such a kind of i don't know it was unreal experience yeah i mean we all have that experience as well and when we're talking about some of the legendary djs uh yangurum says shinechar and shinechar who had some of the coolest nicknames right mawang uh, he yep. had, uh, you know, yep. a nickname called Kyoju, which is basically <laughs> Kyoju is like basically like cult leader uh ghost nation <laughs> Uh, that Ghost was Station. Ghost, I, Station. Ghost Station. Ghost Station was such an incredible show uh, back then, and he was kind of he was a different kind of DJ, right? It was uh, basically indie radio, kind of pirate radio. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it was aired on um, national radio. It was amazing, uh, kind of experiment. Mm-hmm. So he got the, all the creative control. He got all the. Because I mean, usually the the FM music radio, it, it was more about producer, not DJ. Right. So d- sometimes DJ would, uh, you know, in- introduce some some new songs based on their own preference. But it was usually uh, by uh, by producers. But uh, Shinetsu, he he got all the control, all the agency, all the kind of kind of you know created control over over his own show. So it was more of a you know, podcast or pirate, pirate radio than re, uh, than the regular radio show, but mm-hmm. uh, it was kind of, you know, it, it was sort of cultural shift in radio world. I want to talk about uh, one other legendary DJ who also uh, passed away years ago, and I I had the opportunity uh, to meet him a couple of times because oh I oh my worked... god, Kim Gwang Han? No. Uh, oh. I worked with him. Well, I didn't work with him. I, we were in the same uh, radio station. Uh, I worked in the English side. He was obviously in the Korean side. Lee Jong Oh, yeah. Uh, he, he was absolutely. he was one of those people that you know when he's in, no one could. Th- <laughs> he can do anything he wants in the office, uh, and he just. I heard that he sets up the cue sheet himself. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes, like, our producer gives us, like, time, right? So he would say at 46.30, out time. And, you know, we sometimes we end earlier or we go over. He would end his last statement, comment, right on the exact time that he was to, <laughs> supposed to be playing the music. Uh, he was that right, professional. Right before the kind of traffic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Uh, announcement. Yeah, he was... Well, I would call him the Korean Casey Kasem. Oh, wow. I grew up listening to a lot of Casey Kasem shows, American Top 20, American Top 40, uh, from AFKN, American Forces Korean Network. Uh, but Lee Jong-han was that, that impactful uh, you know, figure in radio world. Yeah, he, was, yeah. um, he, he was so pure. I mean, he, he didn't really care about other stuff. He was all about music. You know, he owned uh, several, you know, the music... Uh, music uh, cafe, you know, music bar uh, at the same time. But um, he, he he was so into radio, and uh, he and Kim Gwang Han, uh, they were the the original, um, you know, purely original radio guy. Yeah. I mean, uh, later days, 
uh, it was sort of like a radio DJ is a kind of part time job for many people. But right. uh, at the time, uh, at the time uh, d- during the eighties, you know, mid eighties and late eighties, Yi Jong Hwan and Kim Gwang Han, they just created the the, the, the fantastic world of of radio and uh, taught us a lot about music. I yeah, want to talk very. I want to talk very quickly about one more person because we have about a minute left, and we cannot leave him out because another very iconic name, Pechar Su. Yeah, yeah, the iconic voice, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and the uh, the longest pop music show in, in Korea ever, uh, Music Camp. Yeah, it was, it, it was my childhood. You know, I always checked the latest Billboard Top Forty news. Yeah. On uh, music camp and uh, his intro, the intro song, mm-hmm. you know, the the satisfaction by Rolling Stone. Right. Yeah, it was, it was all about my 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 childhood. I, I I'm I'm being so nostalgic. Yeah, I, I, I yeah that's to, the thing. Yeah, I I'm I feel very nostalgic talking about radio too. But you know, here's the thing. I'm just gonna leave it at this. Uh, one final statement for you is I think. Sometime in the near future, Young Day, I think you're going to be a music radio host <laughs> as well. And it, it, I, I really think that's going to happen. And I think it's going to be very enjoyable to listen. And uh, I'm really looking forward to the day that uh, you do end up hosting your own radio show. So we'll leave it at that. Uh, Thank Young you. Day, unfortunately, we're out of time. Thank you, as always. We'll talk to you again next week. See you next week. You can listen to Korea Now with me, SJ Lee, by downloading the Arirang Radio application or tune in online by visiting www.arirangradio.com. So make sure you tune in Mondays through Fridays, 6pm to 8pm Korea time.